Malaria, as a disease, has been known since ancient times, but its cause and transmission mechanism were only understood much later. The parasite that causes malaria, belonging to the genus Plasmodium, was first discovered in 1880 by the French army surgeon Charles Louis Alphonse Laverin. While working in the military hospital in Constantine, Algeria, Laverin observed the parasites in the blood of a patient suffering from malaria, for which he later received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1907. However, it was not until 1897 that the transmission mechanism of malaria was discovered by the British medical officer Sir Ronald Ross. Working in India, Ross demonstrated that malaria is transmitted by mosquitoes, specifically the female Anopheles mosquito. This discovery was pivotal in understanding the spread of the disease and laid the foundation for strategies to control and eliminate malaria. Ross also received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1902 for his work on malaria. The root of malaria infection involves a complex interaction between the malaria parasite, Plasmodium, and the female Anopheles mosquito. The process begins when an infected mosquito bites a human, injecting the malaria parasite in its sporozoite stage into the person's bloodstream. These sporozoites quickly travel to the liver, where they enter liver cells and begin multiplying, forming thousands of new organisms known as merozoites. After a period of growth and multiplication in the liver, which often goes unnoticed, the merozoites are released back into the bloodstream. Here, they infect red blood cells, RBCs, and continue their rapid multiplication. Inside the RBCs, the parasites grow and eventually cause the cells to burst, releasing more merozoites and causing the characteristic symptoms of malaria, such as fever, chills, and anemia. During their life cycle in the human host, some of the parasites develop into sexual forms, called gametocytes. These gametocytes are the key to the next stage of the malaria life cycle. When another mosquito bites an infected human, it ingests these gametocytes along with the blood. Once inside the mosquito, the gametocytes undergo further development. Male and female forms combine to form zygotes, which then evolve into oochinetes. These oochinetes penetrate the mosquito's gut wall and form oocysts. Within these oocysts, new sporozoites are produced, which migrate to the mosquito's salivary glands. This positions the parasite to be transmitted to the next human host, continuing the cycle of infection. This intricate cycle of development, both in humans and mosquitoes, underlines the challenges in controlling and eradicating malaria, and has guided strategies for prevention, including mosquito control, development of anti-malarial drugs, and ongoing efforts to create effective vaccines. Malaria presents a range of symptoms, often varying in intensity and duration, largely dependent on the type of plasmodium parasite involved, the individual's immunity, and how quickly treatment is sought. The most hallmark symptom of malaria is high fever, typically occurring in cycles and often accompanied by chills, which can range from mild shivering to severe shaking. Following these episodes of fever, individuals commonly experience heavy sweating. Accompanying these symptoms are headaches, which can vary from being mild to quite severe. Muscle aches and a general feeling of weakness and fatigue are also common, contributing to the overall debilitation caused by the illness. Digestive symptoms like nausea and vomiting are frequently reported by those suffering from malaria, and in some cases, the disease can cause diarrhea. One of the significant impacts of malaria is on the blood, specifically leading to anemia due to the destruction of red blood cells. This condition manifests as fatigue and weakness. In more severe cases, the destruction of red blood cells and potential liver dysfunction can lead to jaundice, characterized by a yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. Other symptoms can include chest and abdominal pain, which add to the discomfort of the infected individual. In severe instances of malaria, especially in infections caused by Plasmodium falciparum, there can be rapid breathing, increased heart rate, and even cognitive impairments such as confusion, seizures, or in extreme cases, coma, a condition known as cerebral malaria. Given the severity and varied nature of these symptoms, which can often resemble other conditions, especially in their early stages, malaria is a serious disease that requires immediate medical attention. Prompt diagnosis and treatment are critical for effective recovery and to prevent the onset of more severe complications. 
Treating malaria effectively requires a combination of prompt medical evaluation and the use of specific anti-malarial drugs, with the approach being tailored to the individual's needs. The first step is always a prompt and accurate diagnosis, usually confirmed by a blood test that detects the presence of the malaria parasite. The cornerstone of malaria treatment is anti-malarial medication. The choice of medication and the length of treatment depend on various factors such as the type of plasmodium parasite involved, the severity of the symptoms, and the patient's personal health history. For example, chloroquine, once the most commonly used anti-malarial, is still effective against certain types of malaria but is less effective against plasmodium falciparum due to widespread resistance. In such cases, artemisinin-based combination therapies acts, are often used, as they are currently the most effective treatments for P. falciparum malaria. Depending on the case and regional drug resistance patterns, other medications like atovaquone, proguanol, quinine, mefloquine, or doxycycline might be prescribed. In addition to specific anti-malarial treatment, supportive care plays a crucial role. This includes measures like bed rest, adequate fluid intake to prevent dehydration, and medications to control symptoms like fever and nausea. In cases of severe malaria, which is typically caused by P. falciparum, immediate hospitalization is necessary. Treatment involves the administration of intravenous IV, or intramuscular IM, anti-malarial drugs, such as IV artesunate, and patients are closely monitored for potential complications like anemia, kidney failure, or cerebral malaria. Following the treatment, it's important for patients to have follow-up consultations to ensure that the infection has been completely cleared and to manage any side effects or complications of the disease or its treatment. Alongside treatment, measures to prevent reinfection are also vital. These include the use of mosquito nets, insect repellents, and sometimes prophylactic anti-malarial drugs, especially in areas where malaria is common. It is crucial to emphasize that self-medication for malaria is not recommended due to risks such as drug resistance and potential side effects. All treatments should be conducted under the guidance of a healthcare professional. In regions where malaria is prevalent, effective prevention strategies are key in reducing the risk of infection.